The Venezuelan president has repudiated U.S. President Donald Trump's threat of blockading the South American country. Nicolas Maduro slammed the threat as illegal, vowing that Venezuela will retain free and independent access to maritime routes. Maduro also said that he had requested Venezuela's U.N. ambassador to denounce Trump's remarks to the Security Council. On Friday, a senior U.S. official reportedly described the threat as a signal to the Maduro administration to come up with a plan to step down during the ongoing talks with the opposition. This comes amid positive signals from the talks in Barbados. Mediators say participants are seeking a constitutional statement favorable to both sides. To discuss this further, we have Alfred de Zayas, former U.N. Special Rapporteur, who joins us from Geneva. We also have Marcus Papadopoulos, editor at Politics First, who joins us from London. Uh, welcome to you both. Alfred de Zayas, correct me if I'm wrong, but the announcement by the U.S. to have a blockade on Venezuela sounds eerily and very much like the blockade that's imposed on Yemen at this point. Is the U.S. Uh, uh, planning to execute a strategy such as what has happened in with Yemen on Venezuela? Well, the United States knows that there's a price to pay, and the United States probably will not impose uh, a military naval blockade through the Southern Command. Uh, there's a lot of bluffing going on, and of course it's illegal. Uh, there's also an attempt uh, to make it more palatable. Um, they're speaking of a quarantine. Quarantine is a term that you use when you're talking about uh, a naval blockade in cases of uh, pandemics, in cases that you don't want uh, a disease uh, like smallpox or whatever to come to your country. So that is a euphemism. But uh, a naval blockade of this nature, of course, contravenes uh, General Assembly Resolutions 2625, 3314. It's an act of aggression. It's illegal under the UN Charter, Articles 2, Paragraph 4, etc. That, of course, would not in itself uh, uh, dissuade uh, Trump or uh, other American presidents from uh, breaching international law. I mean, major uh, violation of international law occurred when uh, force was used by NATO against Yugoslavia in 1999 without any approval of the Security Council. Same with regard to Iraq in uh, 2003. So there is always a danger that uh, the United States might go ahead with this. And it is in the hands of uh, countries that uh, trade with uh, Venezuela uh, to protest, to bring this matter to the Security Council, and not only to the Security Council, to the General Assembly. It is uh, high time that uh, the General Assembly adopt a resolution elevating these issues of unilateral coercive measures to the International Court of Justice and seek an advisory opinion that will very clearly say that this is illegal, not only illegal, it has consequences in the form of uh, uh, international criminal law. So it brings in the statute of Rome and the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court uh, into play, but it also, because of state responsibility, means that the United States would have to pay compensation to the people of uh, Venezuela suffering sanctions, or for that matter, uh, to the people of uh, Yemen who are suffering from uh, the attacks uh, by uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, which are being carried out, of course, with American weapons. And the United States continues profiteering from this war by selling weapons uh, to um, uh, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Important to note, uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Antonio Guterres, uh, has uh, repeatedly supported uh, the progress being made in Barbados under the Oslo uh, mechanism, uh, the direct uh, dialogue between opposition and uh, Venezuelan government. So that definitely is the way to go, and not uh, the forthcoming uh, conference in uh, Peru, 
uh, Lima uh, in uh, now on the 6th of August, uh, which uh, in basically uh, would uh, go against uh, the progress that is already being achieved uh, bilaterally. But it has been the interest of the Grupo of Lima and the interests of the United States uh, to torpedo this direct dialogue between mm -hmm. opposition and Venezuela, because bottom line, all they want is regime change. Okay, so Marcus Papadopoulos, I started uh, the question uh, to our guest there, uh, Alfred Desaias, by making a comparison to Yemen, since he ended there with uh, talks that are going on in Barbados, with the upcoming ones to be coming up in Peru, uh, and the fact that uh, perhaps uh, there's a, uh, an effort to torpedo the bilateral talks it, uh, and I'm going to make another comparison here. It sounds an awful lot like what was happening with Syria when talks reached a certain level of success. And then again, you had the U.S. or its allies to come in, whether through violence or what have you on the ground, to try to change the equation of success politically. Uh, why is the U.S. against a political uh, solution uh, when as our guests indicated there perhaps they are more interested in regime change? Well, here we are again. Venezuela's independence and sovereignty is under attack from America, yet despite that, there is not a word of condemnation from Western mainstream media journalists. I can only say eternal damnation to the scoundrels of American and British mainstream media outlets, both conservative and liberal alike, including degenerate in uh, organizations such as The Guardian, The Times, Fox News, and CNN. Now, turning to Donald Trump's threat to uh, place Venezuela under a blockade, if that was to materialize, then uh, that would constitute a very serious escalation in the American threat against Venezuela, because effectively, it would cut Venezuela off from the rest of the world. Now, is it likely that the Trump administration will progress um, uh, with, with, with what Mr. Trump has said he will do? I think it is unlikely. The Americans, I suppose, initially would attempt to get it passed at the United Nations Security Council, but Russia and China would veto it. Therefore, the Americans could resort to a unilateral blockade of Venezuela. But then if they were to do that, that would risk a confrontation with Russia. Let's not forget when the Kennedy administration imposed a blockade, a maritime blockade of Cuba, what happened? The Soviet Union continued to send its vessels to Cuba. And it was that that risked a nuclear war between America and the Soviet Union. And that is what could happen uh, today if the Trump administration was to place a, a blockade, a maritime blockade on Venezuela, because without the support of Russia, then Venezuela would be in very serious trouble. Mm -hmm. And the Russians are not going to walk away from Venezuela. They will continue to send their uh, ships uh, to Venezuela in order to assist the Venezuelan people, for example, when it comes to humanitarian purposes. But let me just pick up on my last note about humanitarian purposes. In the last, uh, it's ever since Donald Trump placed sanctions on Venezuela uh, in 2017, it is estimated that approx approximately 40,000 Venezuelan civilians, men, women and children, have died because of that, in particular because Venezuela is not able to import medicines and food as it was before. Now, a naval blockade would increase right. the amount of deaths. Therefore, I would conclude this. Donald Trump is guilty of crimes against humanity, and he should be in an international uh, court mm -hmm. and tried for what he has done in Venezuela. Alfredo Zayas, that sounds awfully a lot like what you concluded in a report, I believe, uh, that the news came out in January. And the report, I think, was uh, for the year 2017 or 2018, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But some of the sentiments there by our guests was reflected in your uh, view of what is going on in Venezuela. Is that correct? Uh, very much so. But uh, I don't see the mainstream media picking up on it. And other than the Independent in London, they did uh, pick up on it. 
uh, I, I'm convinced uh, that uh, this kind of economic sanctions that lead to the deaths of 40,000 human beings in the year 2018, and the situation has gotten actually much worse in the year 2019, uh, certainly there have been tens of thousands who have also perished uh, this year because of lack of medicine, because of malnutrition, etc., as a direct consequence of the um, uh, blockade, of the financial blockade, of the um, uh, sanctions. Therefore, this is something for the International Criminal Court under Article 7 of the Statute of Rome that defines crimes against humanity. This certainly qualifies as a crime against humanity. This is what the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, BBC should be saying, and they are not saying it. So there is part of the problem, the complicity of the media uh, in this crime against humanity. Mm -hmm. And when they do write about it, they say there is hunger, there is malnutrition in uh, Venezuela, people are dying, and then they put all the blame right. on Maduro. Now, how in the name of God is Maduro going to feed his people if uh, there is a blockade that prevents him from obtaining food and medicines uh, uh -huh. outside? So, uh, I mean, um, my colleague is entirely correct, right. and our criticism is addressed, again, to the international community, Russia, China, are also members of the international community. They have spoken on this issue, and so are the participants okay. in uh, Barbados. Thank you so much for that. Sorry to cut you off there. Alfred Desaias, former UN Special Rapporteur, a pleasure. Marcus Papadoulibas, thank you so much for your comments. Editor of Politics First from London. And that does it for the news review.